take that vibration to my house, she referred to this place, her house. And truly it is, with a mother's house, is her house, his, uh, his house. And I've never been to Dwarka. It's uh, close to Bombay, it's about 150 miles from Bombay. All of you would come, whether you know it or not. You will be there when she says, you go do this yatra for my children, it's for you. You will get the benefit. So I want you to be aware of it. Next week I will be in Dwarka. I don't know if I, how I'm going to do that because most of the temple is under the water. So I told my friend, talk to the chief of Navy, see if you can get me a submarine or something so I can get closer. I don't know if it's possible, but there's a temple built on the shores, holy temple. I'll go there, do all the pujas for you. So I want you to be aware of it. She does it so many places she has sent me. Not me, because I won't be worthy of it. One person won't be worthy of it. It has to be for all of you, all the children. So every time I go to do a puja, I call it, it's a prayogam. You do certain uh, rituals and you connect to that higher cosmic vibration and then invoke all of you. So you would be coming with me to Dwaraka. You will be going and see this temple is probably thousands of years old. Because previous you got, that means at least 5,000 years before time of Mahabharata, uh, this temple was built. So that temple I'll go to all the rituals the way she teaches. Otherwise I won't know what to do. I can go and pray. Yes, but there are specific ways to do it and specific time and specific day specific cities. So this is highly scientific uh, travel. You got to do it at the proper time, at the proper day, proper cities. And then think of all of you. So mentally, I take you, whether you know it or not, your vibrations, I take it. I invoke the my mother on your behalf. So whether you are her or not, you will get her. She would come to you. Depending on your level of evolution, you'll be either aware of it or you may not be aware of it. But you will get the benefit. That's huge. The divine inviting us. Come to me on this day, this time, this city, and do this specific function. That privilege, no one gets it. You have to be a special soul. So you people have been asking for her. A thousand years, not one lifetime, many lifetimes, hundreds of lifetimes. You must have invoked her. You don't remember, but she remembers like Krishna Bhagavan tells Sajuna in the battle, Arjuna refuses to fight. He says, Nothing is worth fighting and killing. For what? I don't want the kingdom. I don't want to be in this place. I won't this place. Then Krishna Bhagavan tells him, you are asking me to justify you fighting. That involves killing. Here, you see. And he shows him the whole battle. It is war already. Here, Arjuna is already. Should I do it? My own cousins, my own mentors, how can I kill them? I would not do that. It is not worth it. And then he shows him the battle. All the people are dead already. The battle is over. And then Arjuna realizes this must be God. For him to know what is to happen and show me that, then he wakes up. And then he fights. That's how the Mahabharata war starts. Today is the day where the Vyasa gives Ganesha, the story of Mahabharata. He tells him, don't slow down, don't stop. He says, if you continue to dictate to me, I will continue to write. So he never stopped. The entire Mahabharata he gives and Ganesha writes. That's what we have. That's a gift given to us, the entire episode. In Mahabharata, there is nothing missing. Everything about life is there. 
interwriting Ramayana and Mahaparata are a fix every aspect of life psychologically, emotionally, every aspect spiritually is given there so Ganesha writes and rather Abhyasa dictates and that was done today today is the day it is a very holy day Akshirti there the, one of the reasons it's so holy is both sun and moon are facing once a year they face each other sun and moon and there's a very energetic uh, vibration on that day anything you do any gift you give to someone so I told people today is the day you do the gift gift anything a dollar ten dollar hundred dollars thousand dollars whatever you can give it today let that soul feel happy and the returns to us is huge, hundred times more than any other day. The rewards. So today is the day we choose to share our gifts to with any other life form, not only human, any life form with consciousness. That's a life. And today is the day. Do it. Don't postpone it. Give it be done with it that load will be taken out and the rewards are huge. So today is the day Mahabharata was written. And what a mighty epic that is. In that epic, every aspect of life is covered. Every emotional, psychological, spiritual, everything about life to be known is there in Mahabharata and Ramayana. And huge, such an interesting uh, epic and he writes, and that's given to us today. So today is a wonderful day. We are very fortunate to, to be able to come and do this function and this holy day once a year. That obviously is chosen by her, not by you and me. I don't we can't do that. We won't know that. She chose. And we have earned it. You have earned it. That in one life. Many lifetimes. You will be noting her. And the reward is given today. Every day she gives rewards. Just to be here, to be invited to her house. I call her our house. Because this temple was built by her. I know it. Some of us did this got to Kesky standing there. She has been involved from the beginning. And mother came to her. And she comes and asks me, who is this lady coming to me? Every day she comes to me. Then I show the picture. Mother, that's her mind. So all these are not something which happens normally. These are all miracles. And she has, I remember taking her, she has come to India many, many times. One Garuda. Garuda cannot fly that much. This Garuda came from Chennai to Madura. It flew. They cannot fly that much, that far. You saw it. The many, many miracles she has seen with me, like this, which normally cannot happen, but it happens here. So it is holy place to be invited by her. What a privilege. What a honor. But ultimately, you earned it. Sometimes in eternity. Eternity is a long time. There's no limit. That's why it's called eternity. Always be. That's why she tells me, don't rush. I have given you people time. Time is unlimited. I have given you time. Take your time and grow up and come back to me. And that's your destiny. You will go back to me. That's it. I do have it. And today is such a day, on this day, to be able to come and participate on this most auspicious day of the year. It's, a, it's, a, it's more than a blessing, it's a gift, a divine gift to all of us. And many of us who are not here, but they are our children too. So she grants it. Main reason she told me and Dr. 
cascade to get involved and do this as a great delay. Whoever is going to go through major crisis that was said 40 years ago. So build a house, I'll teach you how to do that. And I'll bring all the Yakshinis, Mohinis, the Diyantaras, Kandaras, all the high vibratory energy we can see, the two rapid, high vibratory energies. They will be here and they will prepare your next house. What is our next place? What's going to happen to us next? You will go to her world, physical world, that is heaven. You will go to that world. And those energies are real. They are more real than you and I. You and I, mind, body, intellect, complex. It will go away next 20, 30 years. I'll be gone. And nothing of me will pursue except my consciousness. That's the only thing which is, which is always present and that will be present. That's part of it. So to be able to be invited to a place like that, it's, just, it's more than the greatest blessing. And to be granted on this day, actually it's a day, once a year, when sun and moon are facing each other. That doesn't happen. You won't see how that happens. You can imagine the intense energy with the combination. On that day you come, invited by her. You cannot be here. You know I said it hundred times. Unless she invites you, you will not be here. You can give a hundred reasons how, why you came here. We came here because she invited us. Personally. That's why I call personal goddess. She is a personal goddess. She communicates with you, she invites you, she prays with you. These are huge, huge gifts. Life forms don't get it because we are very limited vibration. We are very dense beings, we are very slow beings. Their vibration is even the closest one, the action is a million times as fast as we are, the rapidity. And everything, science taught us, everything is vibratory. That's what makes us live the vibration. And we are part of it. And depending on our level of vibration, our consciousness grows. And we get to learn, we get to see things which are unseeable, unhearable, unfeelable. But they are there. They are only reality. Everything else is not real. Temporary, anything which is temporary cannot be real. Reality has to be permanent, should always be present. And the permanent aspect of us is our soul, our consciousness. That is the only thing which is permanent. That is the only thing which is real. Our consciousness. We call it soul, we call it spirit, we call it whatever you want to call. But that is real, that is permanent, it always lives. And then we grow. There are many lokas, many levels of evolution. We will keep on evolving. And some of us are fortunate to be able to feel those things. And Dr. Kiski and Dr. Shah, they have been involved from the beginning. And they are blessed souls to be involved in it. And Dr. Kiski has come to India many times. As not to Mother Meenakshi. The Mother Meenakshi was the first messenger who brought the information. And uh, my friend took me to, we call them Nadi, scrolls, ancient scrolls. That is the conversation between Mother Meenakshi and Ganesha. Ganesha asked Mother Meenakshi, tell me the story of this soul. The Rishi has written it long ago. 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 years ago. Long ago, they have written the story of her. And that's written and it's recorded. And I was fortunate to be able to hear that. And that was Mother Meenakshi. It's called Meenakshi Nari. That's the conversation between Mother Meenakshi and Ganesha. There are many such. We heard Agastya Nari. He is given the blessing to build the temple for us. And he's completing it. He's going to India next week to do a Kumbhakshi. 
In that place I have never been there. Many times Akesh wanted me to go and see him. I said no. That's a privilege given to him. I'm not going to eat. I would not have a beautiful spot. Next time when you go, you can go and see beautiful mountains. Agastya was asked to go there from north. And he came down to south. And he did all his, most of his meditation in that mountain. I have never seen it. One of the days I will go. I won't take the privilege from him. That is his privilege. Each one of you have a privilege. And that's yours. And I cannot go just because I am blessed, just because I have access to those information. Those are all highly useful information written thousands of years ago. Can you imagine if she sits and sees you and writes you a story? Thousands of years ago. And it's written, but probably rewritten because I saw the, I call them scrolls, ancient scrolls, modern scrolls, written in palm leaves. They look like they are probably like 500 years, 400 years ago. So this has been rewritten. The ancient kings depute somebody, you write this story. So it must have been rewritten hundreds of times. Can you imagine that Trishi out of love writes about us, about you, about her, about her? And I got to hear that. Can you imagine the feeling somebody writes thousands of years ago, your story, what is going to happen to you? To this soul, I don't want to call it you. That soul, this is the travel of that soul. And he writes, and that's a conversation between the one I read, I heard, was a conversation between Ganesha and Mother Binash. There are many, there's like Asya, Kakapujanga, many, many uh, rishis that are in this world. Wonderful, it's a miracle. Can you imagine that so thousands of years ago sits and sees you and writes about you? If you're blessed, you'll have a chance to see it. Otherwise, you won't. So, even to hear that has to be a great blessing. And that is determined already at the time that Rishi writes. He knows. You're going to come five thousand years from now, and you get to hear it. For you, he has written it specifically for you. It's a customized information for you. And I got to see it, not once, many times. I got to know those people, those uh, siddhas, very personally, and she got to see some of them. Uh, I don't know if you know Mahapriva, not the one who passed away. Passed away two times. Mahapriva, they call him. Kanji, uh, I took her once and uh, he was passing. So the day that Saraswati was the next, uh, next in line, he said, No, he's gone. So I went and said, oh, He was gone. So I told her, She was so disappointed, comes all the way from here to see a holy, holy person. But didn't get to see it. So I told her, it's a destiny. If you're not meant, you won't see it. So I took her, walked out of the temple, Kanji, Kamesha temple. We are coming out, then Jayendra Sarasvati comes running. He says, Dr. Star, he wants you back. He's a life story. Am I right? If I tell you, you won't believe me all this. Many, many miracles like this happen. So he took her back, he opened his eyes, blessed him. So that soul is a blessed soul. She got to see that person who already passed. He was a pastor and he saw him. But he woke up and blessed us and blessed her. So she's a wonderful, special soul. And she's given, mother has given her wonderful life. She's a distinguished physician. Uh, here, not a very good body. She had to go through <laughs> lots of suffering physical aspect. But she was a Olympic skier, I think. She was one of the big uh, Olympic skier or somebody like that. And then look at her now. She has how oh, 10 years ago you were not like this. 15 years ago you were not like that. She makes some young energetic and gives some new life. And that's a new life for the past 10, 15 years. I've known you for 20 years probably. She works at Walmart. 
from the same place that I am. So many, many miraculous things are happening. I don't have the time to. I just want you to get the gist. These episodes are mystical, holy, and today is a holy day. On this day, to be able to hear that, you must be very blessed. And today is a day to hear that. So think of all this. Don't forget that. There's a world out there, you don't get to see it. But what you see is unreal. Because it's not permanent. It's a feeling. I'm going to be gone the next 20, 30 years, hopefully. But my consciousness will persist. I'm getting involved in a temple like this to participate. Like where is uh, in there? There. Such a fortunate soul comes to me an hour ago and gives me this check for $25,000. That's a lot of money. It takes a long time to make it. But what I feel is only one thing. How fortunate that soul is. To be able to give, to be able to participate in this construction because this temple will touch thousands maybe millions of souls, all over. Already many people in India know about this temple, this place. How they know, I don't know. And these are Siddhas. You know so much. They see things which cannot be seen. They feel things which cannot be felt. If you are blessed, you would feel it. And we are blessed to come on this day to this holy place, built by her, because the time is such, we need the defense. We need that energy to protect the world from the Asuric aspect of creation. And Mother tells us, listen, they're my children too. I won't neglect them. They have the destiny. Their job is to tempt you so you can overcome them, so you become divine. But you need them. Without Asuras, they're not Devas. If you want a Deva, you've got to satisfy the Asuri energy, and they were children. So I'll give them their say. So she gives them. So, she, so we do our Ayoma, we did three days ago. At the end of the Homa, we take the Asuri energy out with respect. And let them go. We tell them, humans cannot handle you. So you leave us, you come, you visited mother, you did the Homa, you participated, we invited you. Now, Leave us. Humans are not your level. We are lower beings. So we cannot handle that vibration. Time will come when we will come to that level. And then you will. That's your destiny. You will come to that level. You will go to the Avaloka. Many gurus who come from India refer to this place as the Avaloka. What they mean is, in this place you see divine energy. We know some of them. Some of them, they passed away. Uh, that, so this is the Avaloka, that, that energy can survive here and touch us. <clears throat> so today is such a day, this place is full of uh, Deva energy, Akshayatya And this story is related to Ganesha and Vyasa Bhagavan gave that story. Today is the day. See how fortunate we are on this holy day. You hear this mystical story, they're not something you hear all the time. Even this news I gave you about this Nadi, they're not usual. You don't get to see it. If you're not destined, you won't see them. You won't get a chance to see that. You may find out through some source, like I may go or he may go listen on your behalf. He has listened from many people. And they may come and tell you. So you get to hear that. Directly you may not, but these people are very rare. I will meet some of them. Very special souls. Yes. So today is such a day. So think of actually Cynthia. Think of this episode I will to you. On this day, somebody five, six, seven, ten thousand years. You know all this history, it's uh, mythology, is constricted. They will say 10,000, 5,000 years. This happened long before that. 
Humanity has existed, but the proof is all my kind of the 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 So we don't know. If they wait even that long, we can see things 5,000 years old, 10,000 years old. But there are things, now they're finding 50,000 years ago that didn't exist. So the, the memory is gone, the facts are gone. But humanity has existed. We had many of us. Not 5,000, 10,000, 20,000. Hundreds of thousands. Different yuga. They existed. But that uh, remained all underwater. So we don't even know where they existed. Lemuria. Lemuria must have existed 50,000 years ago. Atlantis must have existed 20,000 years ago. But most of the earth is covered in the water. They are under the ocean. You can never get to see the proof. They're all gone. But they existed. Now with all the new technology, we are finding out life existed that long, 30, 40, 50,000 years. But in our Purana, they talk about 100,000 years. Essentially, we are immortals. We don't die. We go down. Conscious level goes down. But our soul, the spirit, exists forever. Why does she exist forever? She has been there from the beginning and she will be there till the end. And she will travel with us. And we will get to visit the, those places, get to see those beings who are not human. They are higher beings. I call them high vibratory entities. Sounds really dry not romantic at all, but they are that high vibratory entities and the vibration is so, so rapid we cannot see them. But they exist, science starting to understand anything which is present in the universe is vibrating. If it doesn't vibrate, it won't exist, it doesn't exist. To be existent, it has to vibrate on different levels of vibration and it not be the object like this has a low vibration. An animate object like me or you, we vibrate fast. So the, you see the difference between this and me or you? That much difference than all because of that vibration. And science accepts it now. Everything is vibrating and depending on the level of vibration, you appear to be what you are. Either human, animal, plant, non-animate, animate, everything vibrates. And that level of vibration determines you. Does it make sense? It does. Scientifically, it does make sense. Everything as present has to vibrate. So today is such a day, highest vibratory energy are here and they are listening to us. And they are very happy that we are growing up and we are given the blessing of doing mother to build the house of earth. But without their help, we can never build a temple like that. Like when I go to Himalayas and find the Rishis meditating place, how would I know that? It's wilderness there. It's mountains. But you show the flame. That flame is indication of that Rishi, Marsh. He meditated there. And he left his imprint in that place. You go there, you meditate on him. And she will give some information about him. So I go there, I meditate, and get the energy. Now, how do you get this information? No way you can get this information. These are totally metaphysical. So she wants us to have it, so she gives the information to us. I come and share it with you. And you go home tonight and think of all this. On this day, Akshay Tintya Day, you are so blessed to be able to hear these stories. And these are not stories. She is real. He is real. And they are there. I'm happy. She is scared. Otherwise, nobody would believe all the episodes we had gone through. One day, we did a special home for a Devata. Right there on the way out. He even not there. Special home. I don't know if she remembers. At noon, it was done at noon. Special home. Clear sky. All of a sudden, 
this icicles, I call them icicles, is ice cubes coming towards us. I saw them as a God, they are going to get hit. But at the minute they touched me, they become soft. I don't know if you remember that episode. But if they hit you, you'll be hurt. The big chunks of icicles. This is the sign she's telling me, I'm blessing you. That was one episode. Many, many episodes like that. So that lady is still there. Every time I go out, I think of her and pray to her. She's a cosmic energy. There's no specific name for her. But she's high level energy. But I know she's here. She blessed us one day on a clear day to make the icicles fall on us. It's a great blessing. That means we were touched by her. I use the term touched by divine. Most of you, all of you are touched by divine in many ways. This is one way. So you have to look, you have to see, you have to feel. And this place is full of her. Every place here uh, is wonderful to be able to receive in the Kali Yuga. This Yuga is not a good Yuga. It's a bad Yuga. Final, before the destruction, made a catastrophe. All this will happen. Look what's happening. Can you imagine what's happening in Ukraine and places like that? People getting killed for nothing. But that is Kali Yuga. You expect that. And you see it. But we will survive. As she has told us, I will provide you with Yakshinis, Mohinis, with Yandaras, Gandharvas. All the super sensual, I use the word super sensual energy. <coughs> High vibrant energy. She has given the world. So the world will survive. It will persevere. And we will, of course, pass and go to different level of vibration. But those of us who are here, who get to hear all these metaphysical stories, then your vision improves. You will realize what is real and what is unreal is totally different. In a sense, I say what is unreal, what cannot be, is what it is. Simply one word. What cannot be is there. And that's what we see as reality. So reality is something it's opposite of what you would think it is. But we, she is real, we are here, we will receive her blessing. And today we get to receive the wonderful blessing on Akshay Tukhiyade. What is the chance of us getting it? One in a million. And she has to decide. And she decided. And she has invited us and has given us that benefit.